Lately I've been working on a racing game that uses sprite stacking as a rendering technique, which is a technique where you use layers of two-dimensional images to create the illusion of a three-dimensional image. You just render those images at different offsets, and then you can rotate those images to create the illusion of something 3D. If you haven't seen sprite stacking before, you can see it being used here in this game that I've been working on. This car right here is actually what we'll be demonstrating with here. So I have a bunch of images. These are the different layers of the car. So this is the bottom of the car, and as you go each image down, that's the next layer up. So we render these images one at a time on top of each other with different offsets, and then those offsets create the illusion of being able to see like the side of the car. So right here I've got just a basic script for a Pi game window. I can run the window, close it, and there's two things that are not normal about this game loop here. Uh, first of all, I have a second less screen and a display. The display is one-fifth of the screen's resolution. You don't have to do this part. This is just so that I can scale up whatever I'm rendering so you can see that I'm just running the display onto the screen and scaling it up based on the size here. So this is just so that I can render some pixel art and then have it nice and big for you guys to see. You could take this out and everything would just be small. And the other thing here is that I have this code here to load in the images for the car. So that's just these images here. You can load these images however you want. The important thing is just that it's the array of images that you want to render. So in my case, if I just do print images right here, and if I run the code, you can see down here that I have all of these images in my array. And that's all I need to get this done. All right, so spray stacking is a pretty simple technique, but it's also very powerful. All we have to do is just create a basic render function where we can take in the surface we want to render to, the images we want to render as a sprite stack, the position we want to render, and a rotation. Uh, I'll also add an extra perimeter for basically how stretched out vertically we want our rendering to be. So let's define our function render stack, and we'll take in the surface, like I mentioned, that's where it's going. The images, that's what we're rendering. We want to take the destination, we want the rotation, and we want the spread. So the spread I'll set to defaulting as one. We'll get to that later. So this is actually just a couple line function really. So we just do for i image in enumerate images. So enumerate will give us both the values of this list and then the index for each value. So this will just go from zero to in our case six and then that will be each of the images. We need that eye so that we can do our offsets here. So first thing is to rotate our image based on whatever rotation we give it. So rotated image equals pi game dot transform to rotate, and then we give it the image we want. So in our case, because we're dragging over our images, we can just pass an image, and then our rotation will be the rotation that was passed into the function. The next step is to just take our surface that we want to render onto and just split our rotated image onto it. Now this next part here for the position is something that I like to do, you don't have to do it, but because the dimensions of your sprite stack change based on how much you've rotated it, uh, I believe I've covered this in either my video about rotations or my video about uh, rotating from the center. But since the rotation changes the dimension of the surface, I find it best to render sprite stacks with reference to the center of the bottom layer. That's just the way to get the most reliable behavior, I find. You can also do some extra math to try to make it the top left, but then it's like kind of overflowing to the sides a bit. You can just position this however you want. I'll be using the center though. So to do that, I'll just take rotated image dot get width, and then we divide it by two, and that will, when subtracted from the position, render it as if we're rendering from the center. So now we can do position one minus rotated image dot get height divided by two, same thing, it's rotated, sorry. And then the last thing over here is that we'll want to do minus i times spread. So if spread is one, that means that for each image we render, we go up one pixel. Uh, if we increase our spread, it'll be spread out even more. If we decrease it, they'll be flattened on top of each other. All right, so with that done, our function's pretty much done here. So the last thing we're going to do is I'm going to say frame equals zero, just so we can keep track and then frame plus equals one, and then render stack onto the display with our images from the position 50-50, that's the center of our display here. And then I want to use the frame as the rotation, and then for the spread, we'll leave it as one for now. All right, so if I run this, 
you can see that we've got our car and it's got a bit of a 3D effect. You can see the sides of it as it rotates around. Now, if we want to see what's really going on here, we can actually set the spread to 15, and let's render it from the bottom of the screen, just so we can see what's going on here. So you can see all the different layers here. This is how sprite stacking works, and this is probably the best illustration you can really get. All of the layers are rendered independently, and they're rotated to the same rotation, but since they're offsetted, it looks 3D. So if we wanted our car to be a little bit taller, we can set the spread to 2. Oh, got to move back to the center. We can set the spread to 2, and our car is much taller. But you do have to be careful when you do this, because you get these jagged edges when you spread them out by 2. Uh, and that's just because there's no layer to fill in that gap pixel. So it's just whatever happened to already be there from the previous layer. So if you're working with pixel art, I find it best to just go ahead and leave the spread at one. Now the concern here is performance issues. And that's the main reason why people don't like to use spread stacking. But if you saw my video about how I implemented grass and was able to render like 10,000 blades or whatever, you can use caching for things that are being rotated to make it a lot more efficient, except in my grass video, I took a bunch of blades of grass and then cached a specific rotation for all of those blades and rendered that cached image. Now with sprite stacking, it's pretty much the same thing, except instead of caching the rotations of the blades, you're caching the rotations of the different layers for your sprite stack. And if you want, you can render all of those layers onto an image for a specific rotation. And then all you have to do is look up that rotation you're rendering in your cache and it renders as if it were like a tile or whatever. It, it'll be super fast that way. The other type of thing you can do is just cache the individual rotations of the layers. Uh, there are some edge cases where you might want to do that, like if you're changing your spread. Uh, but the main thing you lose by caching is just the precision. So I found that I like to cache 90 or so rotations for each sprite stack. So it does take a bit of RAM just to cache all of that. For pixel art though, because it's so resolution and takes so little data to begin with, that's basically not a problem. So I find that sprite stacking is probably best used as a rendering technique for pixel art. If you're going outside of pixel art, you'll run into either performance issues or memory usage issues, and also just the artwork aspect of it gets a lot more complicated if you're not dealing with pixel art. Uh, for actually drawing sprite stacks, what I like to do is just draw the individual layers in a sprites as frames of an animation, and then, then I'll export that. There are tools for generating sprite stacks, which are a lot better, but for most cases, I find that's not necessary. Anyways, just remember that if you want to use this any scaled fashion, I would recommend adding caching. You just take the rotation kind of as an ID associated with the sprite stack and say, for this rotation, we have this already cached and just run to that. And that's how you have to deal with it. If you don't cash, you can run into lots of problems. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.